When we're kids, we don't think about the bad things that could happen to us, and Rachel DiPietro was just like any other kid. I grew up in Jamestown, New York. I lived there all the way until I was 26 years old. Growing up, I grew up in a big Italian family, very close-knit family. Um, I was very involved in my church. I was very involved in my community. Went to college at St. Bonaventure University, master's degree in education and special education in uh, literacy. But at 28 years old, the prime of her life, something threatened to stop Rachel in her tracks. I started noticing my first symptom four months after I had my last child. Um, my thumb would twitch on and off. I also would have some shoulder pain and mood changes. I was noticing in the car two different minor um, little collisions in the car because I could not brake. The um, radiologist at the ER had told me that I had a cyst in my brain that he thought was potentially causing a simple partial seizure. They um, went and referred me for an MRI and put me on a seizure medication. That medication was also causing me hair loss, fatigue. I ended up stopping work, quit my job. I couldn't work anymore. Misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis. Rachel could have given up, but she didn't. When I'm at my third opinion and my husband is with me, the doctor no longer is really talking to me. He's asking my husband all of these questions. I understand that some of the questions he was asking, such as my sleep behaviors, I may not know because I'm sleeping, but at the same time, he doesn't know either because he's sleeping. After five years of confusion, Rachel finally found an answer. And so at the age of 33, I've, I got into my fourth opinion at Baylor. You know, now I have a diagnosis, so you would think that after five years, I would be like, oh my gosh, like I finally have a diagnosis and I'm gonna feel better and I'm gonna do all of this, but that's that's just not how I um, reacted to that. I kind of went into self-destruction mode. <laughs> it, was, it just was a very low, low point, you know, in my life for quite a few months. And um, I had a friend who um, told me about the Houston Area Parkinson's Society, this nonprofit organization here in Houston. And I kind of was nervous at first to, to go. I kind of thought of it as, I don't really want to see a crystal ball of myself in the future. But I did, I, I went, I took that leap of faith and I'm so glad that I went. I, I truly say that between HAPS and, and my faith in God, they, it saved me. So, yep. Strong-willed and determined, Rachel did not let the disease stifle her longing for motherhood. My children, um, fortunately and unfortunately, kind of don't know mom any different, especially my youngest one. Mommy, why does your toe sometimes stick up in the air? And I'll tell them, you know, well, that's, I have dystonia too with Parkinson's and sometimes that's what happens. Does it hurt? Yes, yeah, sometimes. You know, my older one has said, well, I'm going to make a medicine when I grow up because I don't want people's big toes to stick up. I would say get better soon and I will help you find a medicine soon so you can feel better. They were very bothered when I had to stop working because I was working at their school. And I, I struggled with that too because I want to be an example of a working mom, but I've had to very much so reiterate to them the importance of self-care and how if I'm not taking care of myself, I can't take care of them. Outside, um, we have a patio and we have a backyard with swing a swing set and I like to spend a lot of time out there. I'll read my books out there and um, drink my coffee and just a little self-care time out there. The kids are running around and playing. Through exercise, I've really taken on a lot of more higher intensity training workouts such as tennis and I you know I have a couple friends that I'll go meet up and play tennis with um, but a lot of, of the times I just go by myself and there's a back board and I just sit there and, and hit the ball and when I have my heart rate up and everything I really it makes me feel you know very good. Young onset Parkinson's is a diagnosis of Parkinson's before the age of 50. Rachel was 33. So the reactions that I get, you know, are no way, you're too young. Oh my goodness, you have a family. I don't know how you do it. Being young, being female, 
and having no family history for myself uh, makes me very rare. And it makes doctors not even have Parkinson's in their radar probably when they first look at me and diagnose me. We're almost like a subgroup, right? We're dealing still with hormones. We're still dealing with, for females, you know, your menstrual cycle. We have a lot more non-motor symptoms than we do physical symptoms and so we don't present the same in the office we're still raising our kids we're just starting jobs we're you know five ten years into our career this is supposed to be prime time with all of this diagnosis and not knowing what's going on i mean five years is a long time i would definitely um, encourage anybody who's young who's experiencing any type of any symptom to be very um, diligent be very um, aggressive with, you know, your documenting your symptoms, put on your armor, go in, tell the doctor what's going on, and don't stop until you get an answer. I often wonder if we really aren't such a small population. I really think there's more of us out there who just haven't been diagnosed properly because of the lack of education. I was deeply impressed by Rachel Di Pietro's story. There are many elements in her story, but I think the one that sticks out is that of a person who develops Parkinson's at a young age. We reserve that term for people who develop Parkinson's under the age of 50. Rachel was just 33 when the diagnosis was made. Her symptoms started way earlier. This is common for probably anyone affected by Parkinson's. It's particularly vexing in younger people because people simply don't think about the possibility that it could be Parkinson's. Hearing that diagnosis at a young age, the impact it has had on her work, the impact it's had, for example, on her family life, on her children, and make no mistake, this is not rare. Rachel herself says, I think there might be more people out there, and I agree. There are probably younger people left undiagnosed for many years. Uh, she received multiple diagnoses before ultimately the right diagnosis was being made. And Parkinson's is growing, it's growing fast, and it means that there will also be more younger people with Parkinson's. So programs tailored to the unique needs and services that are necessary to support people with young onset Parkinson's are really deeply needed.